Welcome back everyone to Salesforce Mojo. Today we're going to be covering product readiness, which is one of the newest features in B2B commerce. Everyone loves a new feature. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting hands on with how to set up product readiness. We're also going to be showing how to customize product readiness to really fit your business. And we'll go through this with every step in the process. So if you're curious on how to use this new feature in your instance, stick around and let's jump right into it. So the first thing we should do is we should hop over into our tiny homes instance and we'll navigate down to the product workspace here. Now we can see in this instance, we only have three different products. Uh, we'll probably come back through and actually add a couple more products in here so that we can see this uh, a little bit better. Uh, but if we go over to the right hand side, we see that we, we don't really see anything about product readiness. It's not quite there yet. That's because there's a setup item that needs to be done first. So if we hop back over into our menu here and we go down to commerce setup here, you can see that there's a new selection here called product readiness, where prior it was only the commerce reports and product variation. Uh, so if you drop that down and you click product readiness, you can see that it gives you a brief definition of what this actually is. Uh, gives you the ability to enable the feature here uh, and then also gives you the ability to uh, turn on some recommendations uh, so maybe we won't do that as well here. And then once you've done all that, you can rebuild the score down here. So let's go ahead and click rebuild score. And we should be able to go back over to our product workspace now and see what is going on there. So we're back here on the product workspace and you can see that we have a new button that's shown up on the top right hand corner here. Uh, let's go ahead and click that check readiness. And I will say that it did take a second for it to show up. So there is a little bit of calculation that happens behind the scenes here. But once we've clicked the product readiness, what it will go through is it will do all of the checks of our products in our instance here. And so we have multiple different storefronts. Uh, so we have a little bit of capability here, I think, to uh, add some filters in here, you know, based on the catalog, if we wanted to see one store versus the other. Uh, but then you can actually see the score and why this product may or may not be ready. Uh, so you can see that, for instance, this shirt one, has a SKU, it's assigned to a category, but it doesn't have any images or description. Uh, and those are the default states here. And so in this one, for instance, it's not ready for us to uh, really use in the storefront. But as we scroll down here a little further, we have some of our drop-in syncs we've done in the past, uh, and this does fully have everything uh, that we need. Um, so you can see that you can easily detect what is ready and what is not using something like this. So if you're like me, you're probably thinking, this is great. I can look at SKU, image, categories, descriptions, that's all fine and dandy. But for my store, I have three custom fields or three custom properties uh, that I need to make sure are filled out before they go on to the storefront to make sure that they're actually ready. That's pretty typical. And luckily for us, when Salesforce built this, they built the capability to have some customization on the, the rule set here. So what if you, for instance, only wanted to check for description and price, for instance, how would you do something like that? Well, we're gonna go into that next here uh, and actually pull up the documentation first to look at that, and then we'll go through actually implementing that. Here we are on the B2B Commerce and B2B2C Commerce Developer Guide, and there's a new section here, if you haven't found it yet, called Custom Rules for Product Readiness. So this gives a pretty good overview of what you're trying to accomplish here, which in this case, it actually follows that same example that we just went through where we just wanna see prices and descriptions. However, you could take this example and really do whatever you wanted with, because at the end of the day, uh, this is going to be an Apex class that's in your instance. And the key capability here is, is to be able to implement the readiness.product evaluator. And that gives you the ability to really create whatever score you wanted. Um, so why don't we go ahead and take the example that's on this page here and let's go over to our VS Code. Okay, so we're over here in VS Code. Let's create a new class. Let's call this uh, custom product readiness. And we'll go ahead and drop in the uh, sample code that was given uh, on the developer guide here. Uh, we're just going to have to rename this to be custom product readiness. And we'll just do a quick walkthrough of this just so you guys are oriented on how this actually works here. So the first thing here, and they actually do a pretty good job of, you know, commenting this up, but I'll, I'll give a quick walkthrough. The first thing that's important is to make sure that we mark this as ready. It's active, uh, meaning that we can use it. 
then as we scroll down to the evaluate readiness, this is where the meat of what actually happens here. Um, so you can see that in this case, we're in this example, we're checking for price and, uh, and description here. Uh, and so you can see that we do a, um, a SQL query here to pull in all of our products with the description field. So you can see that we're iterating over products right here and we're adding uh, new scores to uh, each of the products that come through here. So the first score that we're adding, uh, you can see is around descriptions. And so you can see that we're passing in uh, the product ID that's required here for us. Uh, you can see that we're passing in a couple other fields here, such as uh, when to actually determine if this is uh, evaluated to uh, true or not, uh, along with kind of the help text of you know why it didn't evaluate to true. Uh, so you can see what we're doing this once right here for the description, and then again down here for the price. A uh, little different uh, way of doing it each time. You can see that we're doing this portion of the score in line. However, we're doing this one outside of it, uh, you know, evaluating the entries of the actual SQL query we're doing for price book entries, and then putting the price down here. But at the end of the day, we're providing the same values, and then we're also providing the scores as the output after we've added those uh, to that uh, list we created up here. Uh, so it's relatively simple, but you can kind of imagine where else I could go with this. Well, I also wanted to add, you know, that custom attribute I mentioned earlier. Well, it should be as easy as adding another attribute up here to your product uh, initial uh, SQL query, and then adding another score down here and evaluating when it is true and when it is false. Um, so let's go ahead and save this, push this to our instance, and let's jump back over into our Salesforce Mojo instance. I will make one more note for those of you who are trying this uh, now, you know, recently, uh, you may receive this error right here, type is not visible readiness uh, dot product evaluator. And you may be wondering, okay, well, that's kind of strange because, you know, the documentation is pretty clear. It doesn't seem like you need to do anything else here. Uh, what I ended up having to do was go to my uh, metadata file and change it from 56, which is the default right now, uh, to 57, which is the latest because this is a brand spanking new. Um, so if you do run into that area, uh, go ahead and just flip it over to 57 and it will deploy successfully. All right, now that we have that deployed into the instance uh, with our customization there, we need to come back to product readiness in the commerce setup and we will need to rebuild score. And this needs to happen every time you implement a, a custom um, scoring mechanism. So go ahead and click rebuild. Again, this may take a couple seconds for it to build, but uh, let's hop back over into our product workspace and we'll check back in there. All right, we're back here in our product workspace. Let's go ahead and click check readiness here. And almost immediately we see that the scores are different here in this middle column. If we click on this checkbox, we can see that this one is fully ready, but if we check on some of the ones that are partially ready, we can see that this one is missing a description length. Now that description length was definitely not there before. So if we hop back over into our VS code, we can see that we named this one description length, which is where that one's coming from. Uh, and we can also see that we see price right here, which is what we named the second score that we created. Uh, and so you can start to see that, you know, this one, for instance, does have a description. We don't have a price for this one, so we probably should be adding that. Uh, and we can see very easily where everything is at. Uh, so again, this is very helpful when you have a lot of products that you're adding on a regular basis, whether it's through an integration or whether through it's manual. Uh, and you can kind of come in here and do a gut check of what's ready and what's not ready fairly quickly. All right, and that'll do it for us today. Hopefully this was a helpful overview of one of the newest features of B2B commerce and B2B2C commerce with product readiness. Uh, hopefully that opened your eyes up to what's standard and how to really customize this uh, fairly quickly actually uh, to really fit your business and your needs here. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe if you liked the video. Uh, please comment if you have any questions or recommendations for videos. I'm always looking for more ideas on that. And thanks for watching.